building, associate minister, or is it assistant pastor? I want to get it right. Foster reading this morning will be coming from 1 Corinthians, 12th chapter, 12 through the 27th verses. Yeah, so you will stand, but if it's your custom, you stand on the reading of God's word and uh, say amen when you have it. If you don't have it, we can wait on you.
the altar. You may come at this particular time. Let your request be made known unto the church, that we may pray with you. Let your request be made known unto God, that he may answer your prayer.
you are God to save us, to supply each and every need. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we may have to think. But Father God, for what we think may not be enough, God, we know that you understand it's more than necessary. We understand, Lord God, that what we may have an abundance, that you even feel, Lord God, that we may need more. Father God, we understand, Lord God, and we thank you yeah. just for being God all by right. yeah. Understanding that you don't need any help, Lord God. Oh, no. thank you, Lord. Lord God, through all the trials and all the tribulations and all the struggles, and Lord God, each and every day, Lord God, that we do this Christian walk, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for standing by our side. He will send us through, Lord God, bring us to it, but always. This church. Yes, Lord. We pray for those members that yes, may not God. be here this day. Yes, we pray for yes, each and every one, yes, Lord God, God, that may be sick this morning, troubled yes, this morning, but aching in the bodies and in the hearts and in the minds and in the souls. Lord God, we thank you for being a God that specializes. A God that is able to do anything.
downstairs. And her sister Geneva told us that she would be out of town. So y'all got to listen to me and Lisa today. <laughs> Amen.
Well, does she give all a handful of his words? Let's slap Oh, shoot. Yeah, I'm looking at this picture, Pastor Blackman and Lady Blackman, y'all sharp. That's a nice little backdrop. I see you. Don't play with me, Pastor. Sit down, Miss. I think I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. All right. Just, just a little bit. I need you.
what he's done for me. Yes. Gave me the victory. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. I
before I go on the phone with me, say something right now. I ain't talking about nobody, I'm talking to all of us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So you go ahead and say out and amen and, and relax. Amen. I ain't talking about nobody. First of all, I don't know nobody. Well, I'm talking about nobody except Francis. I can talk about Francis. Go back and talk about Francis. I ain't gonna talk about nobody. But God is saying that when I bring you together in this spiritual marriage, let's put that in there. Because some folks will leave here with a mess and say, the pastor married to me. Behave. The pastor married to you spiritually. Amen. For the perfecting of faith, for the work of the ministry. Everybody in here wants to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have a ministry. Amen. Yeah. Whether it's from your singing, whether it's from your de being a deacon, an usher, whether it's from being a praise leader, we all have a ministry. Amen. There are people that singers will reach that a preacher never will. Amen. There are people that a deacon can reach that no one else can reach because we all are assigned a ministry and God has assigned some lost souls to all of us. The pastor cannot help the church grow by himself. Now let's put this in here. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. It takes all of us to build the church. Now, point in matter is, when folks come into the church seeking somewhere to find salvation, they don't need old saints to be frowning at them because they ain't got no suit. Amen. What God is calling for us to do is look beyond the outer countenance of a person and try to find out what is missing that we can help supply in their life. And don't fool yourself, attitude can go a long way. Good attitude, bad attitude can make a difference in how quick somebody will leave a new church. Amen. Now, now, now a lot of times we, we have to be very careful with our language we say things and folks get hurt. Yes, sir. And we have to be careful how we speak and talk that we don't offend nobody because that's not our job. Let me give you something else in our job. It is not your job to check nobody's refrigerator. <laughs> Every tub uh -huh. got to stand on the long bottom. Yeah, okay. Our job is to pray one for the other because I got a new snack for you. There's nobody sitting in here today or standing here, me, Pastor Spielman, Pastor Blackman, none of us are perfect. None of us is Jesus Jr. God is working on all of us. He still says he got some stuff he needs to take from us. And some of that stuff we refuse to let go because it feels good, tastes good, think we make us feel good. But the word of God said, but my God shall supply all your need according to you don't need that stuff. You need Jesus. Partying, dancing, snapping your fingers, whatever. Season. The only thing eternal is a relationship with Christ. Yes. Yes. Everything else will fade away. Yes. Amen? Yes. Now, those of us who are over 50, and some of y'all think y'all forgot that you're over 50, we need to be reminded of how God has carried us through different cycles yeah. of our, we've seen some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We've been rescued from, from some stuff. Yeah. And guess what? It wasn't because we was good. Yeah. It's because somewhere in the church, somebody was praying for us. Yeah. Lord, you see that hard-headed boy? Yeah. Yes. The church needs to get back to praying for the lost. Stop pointing fingers like we have arrived. All right, all right. We need to be equipped with better love one yeah, for the other. Right. And so often we find ourselves, especially when our churches begin to dwindle. Yeah. I'm in charge. 
I'm running this. Oh, yeah. wow. I, I ain't looking at nobody. Yeah. But the thing that God wants us to do, let's work together. Yeah. And I, 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 I want to commend the praise team because I don't understand folks think they got to have 20 folks in the choir singing. <laughs> How many of y'all remember when we used to have singing conventions and we used to do solos, duets, quartets? Why? You can use what you got and thank God for what you have. Now, I ain't going to tell a lie. I wish I could put a keyboard like Pastor Black. I ain't going to lie. I wish I could. I can't. Who said that? Shame, shame, shame. I got good ears. I heard that. But what God says, I'm going to bless you according to what you need. I'm going to help you out, Pastor Black, and he don't need you to sing because you got a girl. Praise the Lord, everybody. So what God says is, I will give you somebody that will keep your mind, watch me, stay we lose ourselves so often because we feel we don't have what it takes. There's not a church open that God does not have the equipment needed in that church. The problem is we don't let folks get up to bless the Lord because they don't look right. The problem is they're not paying no tithes. No, she can't sing. She, not, she, can't, she can't sing. She's not paying no tithes. Now, now I've been really, really upset some folks. The problem is somebody live with somebody and you think they ain't got no right praise to God. Let them praise their way out of that. So often we clap folks down. I'm not going to stand up and tell you every Sunday, stop doing what that means. That's right. No, 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 no. I'm going to pray to God that he touch your heart. That's right. I will talk to you, but you know, every Sunday. Now listen here, now. <laughs> you need to stop doing what you're doing. We will never do anything but talk about stuff. Because everybody doing something. Uh, it don't make no difference how well you sing, how well you preach, how well you usher, how well you put your lift off. Everybody doing something. Come on. Have you known know where to fall? You know, have seen. Come short of God's glory. Yes. And what God says, when I give you a pastor, it will help you equip your mind. Yes. 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 When I give you a pastor, it will help equip you for the ministry. Yes. And, and, and so often, Amen. we got a lot of cowards. In the pulpit. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke. You can't tell me nothing. Leave. You need to leave. Because if you can't ever be chastised, you can't grow. And you will stay. And think, listen, I'm going to give y'all something before I sit down that they're going to blow your mind. Blow your mind. So often preachers preach these things, but they have to be truthful. Somebody got to preach to us. That's right. Amen. If you are always preaching and nobody can preach to you, amen. if you can't say amen unless it's your favorite preacher, if you can't wave your hands if it ain't your favorite preacher, something is wrong with your salvation. As long as the word of God is utilized for the word to be given to the people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ought not have a problem coming off your lips. But I don't like the way he's dressed. We're not going to heaven. Come on. Worrying about sharp skin suits. That's right. Is thine heart right? A shepherd for the sheep. I've heard preachers preach about the shepherd and the sheep. And one of the first things, and I don't know why they like to do this, they like to clear up how dumb a sheep is. Well, well, well. I don't like that. Because without the knowledge and the direction of the Holy Spirit, Pastor and sheep. Uh -huh. 
If you don't trust God to lead God and direct you, we're all dumb. So, Pastor, quit talking about somebody that's dumb. And remember, if you don't stay with the Lord, you don't do. Now, I'll back up what I said. Just turn to Romans chapter 10 so y'all won't be saying, you know, somebody ain't calling us dumb. I ain't calling nobody dumb. No, I ain't calling nobody dumb. Let's just turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Listen, this is, Brother, in my heart's desire and pray to God for his ears that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Here it is. For they have been ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Well, here's where, where, where we have our dilemmas is too many people and pastors forget we are representing the kingdom of God. God. This ain't your house. That's right. Pick your trash up. This ain't your house. Wipe your feet off at the front door. This ain't your house. Stop throwing your coat and clothes all over the place. This is the house of the Lord where we come to praise his name. Say thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. I really thank the Lord for holding me when I should have been dead. But we get confused because somebody patted us on the back. Somebody said, you preach on good. I tell folks, don't come up to me about I preach because I don't know how to preach. I've been preaching 40 years and I still don't know how to preach. Because this is delicate business. And you have to understand that here we are, I'm still in Ephesians 4, I'm sorry, go back, watch this, in verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, listen to this, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed who can rightly divide the word. Just cause somebody said, I'm the Lord of the Lord. He heard my cry. You better not follow all that homie. Some of that humming is to mesmerize you and lose you. But you got to stay in the word of God. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Watch verse 16. From whom the whole body look at this. Yes. Fitly joined together and compacted by which every joint supplied according to effectual working in the measure of every part make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You all smile when the praise team is saying. Well, I can't say. You all smile when the deacon is praying. You all smile when the preacher is preaching. You all smile when the usher is ushering. Because if we love one another and support one another, then the love will spread through. And somebody will come in the house of God saying, this is the house of love. I want to be in this house. I want to be in this family. I want to be a part of this church. But we find ourselves, I'm jealous because you didn't let me do something.
and they're not equipped to deal with what they went after. And I want to explain something to you now. Let me explain something to you. You can't pay for the gospel. You can only appreciate it. Amen. I don't care how much a salary any church gives a pastor. That is not payment for the gospel. It's appreciation for the laboring in the gospel. The best way that you can tell a pastor you appreciate him is not give him a hard time. I'll look down for a minute. You all right? Okay. Watch this, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Don't walk around with an empty well, for man thinks of himself to be something. What well, he is nothing. He deceiveth himself. I got a clue. You got yourself a But what we are looking for is this marriage. The marriage goes this way. I am committing my life uh -huh. to you. I am committing my time to you. I am committing my talents, my gift, and please don't leave out the anointing to you. There are people who have melodious voices. There are preachers who have the tone and no anointing. I want to share something with you as well. There are people who are talented and gifted and anointed and mean and ugly. <laughs> you can't hear the anointing or the talent and the gift for the expression that a person has. Say something to I wish you would. Now let's just be real. We know in our churches we all have ran across somebody that were real, you know, you know, you know, the, you know, the neck. You remember the neck? You say, I wish you would. But it's it's in a season in our churches where we have to change our posture and become people of love and prayer and forgiveness. Love and compassion. Mm -hmm. We want compassion, but we don't want to give nobody enough. That's right. We want love, but don't want to give love. We want, we want everything coming to us, but don't want to dispense nothing out. And so God is saying, in these latter days, I want to equip you with everything that will make your Christian walk holy. Yeah. And the first thing you have to do is have a relationship. Now, I'm going to give y'all this one for free. You're not going to like everybody. And everybody ain't going to like you. But you got to love everybody. That's right. There's a difference. There's a difference. Now, if, you, if we tell the truth when we look in the mirror and we've done some stuff there, are sometimes we don't like ourselves. Amen. Amen. But I know one thing, sure. You love sure. Can't nobody love sure better than sure love sure. And it's like, you can see it. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna see it, I'm convinced. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, I need that word. <laughs> I'm confident in myself enough that I'm not gonna let your anger, your attitude, your rolling eyes make me feel that I'm not what God said I was, and you ought to feel the same way. If you don't think you something, how do you think somebody else will think you something? Between the pastor and the sheep. Every now and then, the pastor has to take his long rod and <laughs> pull somebody in. I know y'all like it. Well, one thing I want you to remember 
only one head in the church. One earthly head. Jesus Christ is the head. I don't care how well any preacher preaches. If you leave Jesus out, he's just talking. So this marriage between the shepherd and the sheep means I might have 25. But if one of them 25 gets in trouble, I have taught and am secure enough because the unity of the 24 will hold them together while I go get that one that is lost. But now we have this mentality because we got comfortable. And with Dean, you need to go check on sister so and so. There are some issues and times where it is up to the pastor. Amen. And go check that person out. Amen. Now, now I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Don't, don't, don't send the pastor go check on nobody. And, and you've seen him with a whole lot of messy business. <laughs> she over there, and it's her own fault. She act. I, you go over there and tell her about herself. <laughs> we don't need that. You get beat up enough from other folks. When you come to the house of the Lord, you need love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need no pastor with no bell hanging on the end of the pulpit. No, yeah. You need some love. Amen. You go on your job, you beat up all week long. You're dealing with demons and all kinds. When you come to the house of the Lord, you don't need to be dealing with no demons. Amen. You need to come in the house of the Lord dealing with some holiness. Yeah. And so let's pray one for the other. And when the pastor needs to go see about somebody, be mindful enough not to send him by himself. But somebody say, I'm going with you. Yes. Now, now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Ain't no, need, ain't no need, ain't no need, and nobody calling me. Think I'm coming over to your house by myself. <laughs> I don't give you a man or a woman. I'm, if ain't nobody going with me, I ain't coming. Because people are messy. They can't stand to see you do the past black man. Let me see what I can find out on black man. I'm going to set you up. But if you don't put yourself in that position, it'll be a lie. See, people try. They try you because you're in the church. You go on these jobs, you all that, huh? And so you stand there taking you need to put them in check. You ain't ready. Don't worry about it when God told nobody to walk all over you. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for your holiness. Stand up for your righteousness. Stand up for your commitment to Christ. And don't let nobody trample all over you. You've got to be a witness wherever you are. Got to, uh, I got to keep this job. No, you don't. If you stand up for Jesus and you have to eat in that day, you're fired. He got something better for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I don't think it's really my job shall supply. No, 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 no. All my needs. No, no, no. Is it God? God. So if you want your church to be the church, marry the pastor and the church. In a relationship of love, holiness, love, yes, compassion, brother. love, forgiveness, brother. brotherhood, sisterhood, family, unity. Yes, Lord. And a family says, I'm not going to let you mess with nobody in my family. Right. Now, you know, we used to get the worst book when somebody to go home and say, Mama, we got in this fight. The first thing is, did your brother help? <laughs> now you know if you didn't help, you don't get ready to get a whoop. So listen, listen, the stuff that we grew up on, why are we trying to throw it away? It still means something. Amen. If you don't live on this church and you let somebody come in here and tear this church up, you can just sit back and say, somebody better say something. You speak up. Yeah. Right. Now, now, now I want to give y'all one free, so this one's going to cost you five cents. Mm -hmm. 
Love your pastor. Good or bad. Now, now y'all throw that, throw that little, throw that little crazy phrase away. I'm with you as long as you're right. Say stuff, mess up. Yeah. He needs your support. Yeah. If he feel like you're not with him when he falls, he gonna stay down. Yeah. Amen. 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 I don't like him like that. <laughs> you ain't supposed to like. You supposed to love him. Yeah. And then watch this. Whether you accept it or not, when they talk about him, uh, they talk about you. All right. All right. Yeah. Ain't nobody in here married to nobody or courting nobody. You're going to let somebody talk about them and you ain't going to defend them. Right. Not if you love them. Amen. So while you are sheep, you got a shepherd. Well, love. Look back when you didn't have a shepherd. Something was missing. You might have thought it wasn't, but it was. And every shepherd is not the same. Amen. 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 Now, uh, Pastor, you have so and so didn't do it like that. I don't know what I'm going to have so and so did. I'm going to hear. But the season and the vision. If God had given Pastor Blackman, he got nothing to do with what he gave the pastor before. Oh, all right. If it was intended for that pastor to stay here, he'd still be here. <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. Now, don't worry about the pews that are empty. Uh -huh. I've seen God take a church that was full, mm -hmm. and as they die off and walk off, yeah, yeah. and they'll take them 25 committed folks and do more than they did with 200. Oh, yeah. Amen. I know I'm going. But you have to be committed to where you are. Amen. 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 Understand this. Don't storm off. If you disagree with something the pastor say, pray about it. Because you know, if you if you if you run up to a pastor, I don't like what you say while it's fresh, sometimes the approach is wrong. You know, we, 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 we don't say things because we didn't think. We just flap our gums. Now, I'm telling y'all something that I know. I've been pastoring 30 some years. I know what I'm talking about. I had some folks sitting with me. My worst enemies. But you have no God enough. And you can't wear your feelings on your sleeves. Amen. So if you're married to the word, you're married to the church, you're married to God, and you accept the fact that he gave you a shepherd and you are the sheep, then you have to understand there are going to be some ups, some downs, some misunderstandings, but most of all, come now let us reason together, say the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 118. We don't like being part. Though your sin be stopped. Uh-huh. He'll watch. Why? Why do you stop? So, I said to you, I was going to give you something before I said that. I'm going to give it to you now. Every shepherd needs a shepherd. Have any of y'all ever heard of a, 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 a passage of scripture called Psalms 23? Y'all ever heard that one? The Lord is my shepherd. It does. 
doesn't matter. Let me explain to you better. She. I didn't say all sheep were nice. I didn't say all sheep were behaving. Uh -huh. But all sheep are good sheep because of the love we have for them. Now, how many of y'all have brothers and sisters? You brothers and sisters, but you ain't the same. Mama love him more than she loved you. That's not true. The problem is she has to do and deal with things differently for each child. Jesus loves all of us the same. And we have to understand it's our attitude that makes folks think. He get more attention than me. Uh -huh. Some it takes a little. Some it takes a little more. Some it takes a lot. Some it's just a constant. I got to run over and check on him right now. I got to. Right. It's like in the church. There are some members we ain't got to never bother with. Uh -huh. They are self-sufficient. <laughs> and then there are some members that every five minutes you got to be talking, having conversation with. You got to be praying about it. You got to be checking Oh, so let me check now. But the thing about it is, I want to ask you a question. What gives you the nerve to check me, but I can't check you? Oh, oh I knew y'all wasn't going to say that. Oh, I knew you say that. oh, you didn't hear what I said? Okay, sure. I'm going to let you hear this. What makes you think you can check the pastor, but he can't check you? I don't know anybody saying that. It's okay. Moving on. So we are. One body, one body in Christ. In Christ. And since we are one body, we all are not the same members, but we all make up this one body. Everybody do this. This one body. And when God brings us together, I know you got a problem sometimes. What's your on that? What's your on that? What, 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 what praise team at? But God gave all of us a song. You need to sing your song and stop trying to sing Cheryl's song. You need to preach your sermon and stop trying to preach Biden's sermon. You need to wave your hand and thank God for what he's done for you and not worry about what he's done for somebody else. To God be the glory for what he's done for me. Well, I want to give you all this. I'm going to my seat. I don't feel good and I'm not going to fall out of here. There was, last year, when I came up here, I'm walking around with two cancers and didn't even know it. I want to show y'all something about how we do. I was functioning with cancer. And the minute the doctor revealed something to us, some of us, Fall out and die. Yeah. Yeah. The doctor said to me on December the 17th, he said, Mr. Perry, you have renal carcinoma cancer. Mm. Wow. And he looked at me, I said, hey. <laughs> he said that uh, you're, you're approaching stage three and we're going to have to operate. I said, hey. <laughs> and so, here it was, the end of the year, and I said, let's get it done. He said, well, we got to wait. I know you're waiting on that deductible. You ain't fooling me. <laughs> so here we go. We are all the way to March. And I have the surgery. And the doctor says, you're going to have to have chemo and radiation when I get done. And well, had the operation. I come in the room, and I've been in the hospital so much up in Memorial Park for Blackman. Now I got my own room. Uh, I looked around when I woke up. I said, "This is in my room." <laughs> I was in another section. Yeah. And the doctor came in and talked to me, and, and uh, they didn't tell me while I was on the operating table. I went into shock. While he was trying to finish up, and I jerked and jumped up. Oh, wow. I'm anesthesia. Huh. And a needle broke off while he was trying to stitch me up. Oh, wow. It took him an hour and some to find the needle. And 
digging and digging and digging, and some the, the spirit finally told him that you need to get the ultrasound, folks, so you can see that need. All right, come on now. Finally got it out, and, and, and here I am all these months later, and I, I, at least I just got this one little spot that just aggravates me, right, where that needle broke off. I said to him, you know you got the needle out. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, you got to trust God in your dark hours. I did not have chemo nor radiation. Amen. The cancer was 100% taken out. They took a piece off of my upper kidney and my lower kidney, and there's no sign of cancer in my kidney no more. Amen. The process got rough. Everything I smelled, every food I, I tasted, I just couldn't eat. So three weeks I couldn't eat nothing but apple sauce and, and jello. Lost 44 pounds and then, then taking this medicine and not eating enough. And then all of a sudden, my bowels locked up. And I mean, I was hollering for my mama. I was in misery, but Jesus never let me by myself. So I went to the emergency room. On March 17th, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. March 18th, I was scheduled at 8.30 a.m. to have my follow-up appointment. Yes. The doctor comes in and says, everything looks good. Got all of the cancer out of your kidney, but, what do you mean, but? You have prostate cancer. Jesus. Well, Y'all talk about me if you want. I didn't say and that time. <laughs> I lost it. My emotions left me. Understand what I say? I said my emotions left me. My faith didn't leave me, but my emotions did. And so the doctor begins to say, you just had surgery. I have to wait eight weeks. I could give you chemo and radiation. But your approach is stage three, so I, I, I'm going to have to operate anyway. I said, I ain't doing no chemo and radiation, and you can operate anyway. We're going to operate. So what you, what, whatever you got to do, let's do it. Amen. He went on to explain some things, and uh, he asked me a question, and Sister Murray answered before I could. Oh, yeah. And the thing about it is, you got to learn life is precious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when you are blessed to know Jesus, just because you are in a dark place, the light of Jesus can turn darkness into marvelous light. Well, here I am, eight weeks packed, going to operate room again. Well, I was asleep the first time. They carried me in the operating room, Pastor Spillman. Some of y'all women, when y'all go have y'all exam, they got this little thing they sit y'all in. And I saw her sitting down and said, what was that for? <laughs> he said, I got to put you in there. <laughs> and I did not know because as soon as they got me in position, they put me to sleep. And I was upside down for three and a half hours having surgery. Wow. And when I woke up, he said, you're not going to have much pain. Your kidney surgery will be worse than this. When I woke up and he came in the room, I said, you told me a lie. <laughs> I was in excruciating pain. Well, 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 well. But look at this. The pain had a process to praise. He came in and said, well, I got everything I needed to get, and I didn't have to take what I thought I was going to have to take because you were pretty much healthy, and so in a few months, you should be all right. I tell you, I'm all right now. So my phrase that I use from December to now, it is well with my soul. I began to thank God that he didn't let me die with cancer. I began to thank God that here again I didn't have chemo or radiation. And what
The doctor said it'd be six months for I preach black, pastor black. It was two and a half weeks. I made an announcement in the church with the help of the Lord. When you see me next Sunday, I plan to stand up and tell you about the goodness of the Lord. He gave the church an apostle, a pastor, and a teacher. And he told me to stand up and witness and tell the world, cancer can't kill you because of love. Yeah. 
is now complete. He died. They took him off the cross. They put him in the tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. He wants you to know whatever you got going on.
and God is with you and to help us. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you would. God, we thank you for being our shepherd. We thank you for leading us through many dangers, seen and unseen. We thank you, Lord, that we need you in our lives. Oh, God, forgive us for all our wrongs and sins. Create in us a clean heart. Renew within us the right spirit. Bless us to be found faithful in whatever you have called us to do. Bless every home that is represented here. Bless every family represented here. Bless this pastor and this church family. If you have married them together, O oh God, let there be love and harmony in this relationship. And teach us, O oh God, when we have disagreements, that we not become disagreeable. Give us more love one for the other, more concern one for the other, and we just want to tell you thank you, God. Thank you for the rising of the sun and the going down of the sun. For your name is worthy to be praised. We ask, O oh God, that you bless the food that has been prepared. Bless the hands that prepare it. That it might be for the nourishment of our physical bodies. Keep us, bless us. Give traveling grace and mercy to all those who are traveling this way. That the continuation of this day would be what you would have it to be. That their pastor and wife would be appreciated and know they're appreciated. Not just today, but every week. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. Now, God, accept our prayer today and anything or anyone that we have failed to pray for. Look down into our hearts as we pray this day. If there's anyone lost, oh God, we pray that your word will touch them. That, oh God, before it is everlasting too late, they will come crying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And then those of us who have received salvation, Equip us with more love in our hearts. Equip us with the same forgiveness and patience that you had on us. That we won't run nobody away from the church. But whosoever we, let him come. Bless us now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank God. Somebody tell them you love.